What's up, everyone? We're in the middle of football season here. Welcome to a special edition of Times New Sports Chat. I'm Justin Carlucci here with Patrick Matsinko, Tom McCarroll from Lehighton, and Sam Bonner from Tamako. Patrick, it's good to see you again. How's it going over there at the Times News? Where are you? At the main office in Lehighton, all by yourself? Yep, stuck in the conference room, but uh, definitely happy to be back and happy to be two weeks into the season. So, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of ground to cover. It's certainly been since we've been together um even if we're still apart but uh yeah it's definitely good to be back and uh yeah definitely have a lot of stuff to talk about yeah uh it's just been a wacky couple of months and everything's changing by the day and uh, i know we have a couple good questions uh for the coaches here just about you know, preparation for the season and it's just been a different couple of months but thank you guys for joining us and obviously uh, you guys had a hell of a game last week saturday and um yeah i guess you know sam uh, and tom i'll start with you sam uh, what was it like playing saturday you know uh, kind of a day game environment hey it was pretty neat it was almost like i was saying all the guys our guys it's like college game day you know we haven't had too many saturday afternoon games you know, it was a beautiful day you know the only thing is you wish you had a chance to have more people in the stands more parents you know band. but you know it's just great to be playing football right now for sure. Tom, any thoughts, you know, Saturday game, you know, great, you know, obviously everybody wishes there was, you know, more people in the stands and things like that. It was a you know, hell of a battle between you know, two huge teams. I would have had a, a big draw, you know, under normal circumstances, but you know, what, what was the intensity like over there? Well, you know, I mean, I think, I think, you know, from a sideline perspective, I mean, it's always nice to have crowds, but you know, you're so locked in and focused on, you know, working with the kids, trying to get them to execute, you know, I mean, I don't think the procedures really changed a whole lot, uh, you know, for us at least. But it was like it was it was cool to play on a Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, being a, a marrying graduate from the '90s, that's kind of what we knew as as far as our home game. So I think I said to Coach Bonner, it's kind of what it was like—a little throwback, you know, to to back when you know we played in high school and I played in high school. You know, our home games were always Saturdays at one o'clock. So that's kind of had, had that feel to it. Patrick, I know you've covered a, a lot of previews and you talked to a lot of coaches. Uh, you know, just from your point of view, what were kind of some of your takeaways uh, from the game between you know Tom and Sam's teams on Saturday? Oh, it was. Uh, I mean, it was that was our game of the week, um, and certainly you know it was uh, you know certainly um, you know something that kind of lived up to you know to to that. You know, I think that billing you know was definitely well played on on both sides. Um, yeah, and you know it's just still one of those things. I think you know for you know, for everybody where it's very early in the season and you're still kind of, you know, getting a feel for just kind of, you know, where everybody is and, you know, how everything is at that point in the season. Um, yeah, obviously, Tamakwa came away, uh, came away with a win, um, went to 2-0. and um, Coach Bonner, just kind of what did you really like that, you know, that you saw from your, from your team from Saturday's win? Well, you know, we knew we had a lot of challenges going in. Um, yeah, Tom has a great job with the offense. You know, we knew we had a lot of weapons that you know we had to account for. And, and one of our things that we know we had a young secondary, so there were some questions with our secondary going into the game. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I feel like we had a pretty strong front seven. Four or five of those guys, you know, they played a lot last year on our team that we had, and were a big part of the, the success that we had. But um, yeah, I like said we knew it was going to be a, a, a hard fought game. You know two teams like we have going right now that, you know, you figure, you know, if you play five games, it'll probably be two kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, we come down to the end and, you know, we're fortunate that we made some plays at the end and we had some of our older guys make some big plays for us, you know, in critical situations. So, you know, obviously anytime you get out with a win, you know, you're happy, you know, especially, you know, starting the year off the way we have, you know, a lot of question marks, you know, a little bit of, I don't want to say a younger team, because we still have, you know, that, a four or five senior base that's been doing a lot of stuff for us the last couple of weeks. But, you know, actually, like you said, it's just happy to get out with a win on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, and you mentioned some of those upperclassmen. I mean, I know we talked Saturday about just the guys that, you know, they kind of carried the ball a lot. You know, you think about Logan Hess, and then you think about you know, Shipram and, you know, Kirby, and then obviously and a quarterback, um, you know, but just kind of what can you say about their performance and then also just sort of the leadership that they provide, you know, just thinking about from, you know, from their spots, you know, on both offense and defense, you know, for all, for all those guys. Yeah, yeah, like Nate Wickersham, we knew going in that, you know, he didn't get a lot of reps at quarterback over his career, but we knew he's a leader. So, you know, we know he, he handled the game well. 
you know, we're not going to be throwing for 300 yards this year in a game. But at the same time, you know, we're hoping that he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. And I think the one mistake he made was maybe to pick, but he always seems to make up for it with a big play on one side of the ball, either the offense or defensive side. So we knew, knew going in, even to the season, that he was going to be a leader for us. Um, then we mentioned before, you know, Nate Kirby, um, Schick and Hess. I mean, those guys have, you know, seen a lot of time, you know, against really good teams. And we were fortunate that we made a good run last year, that we had five extra games in at the end of the year. And those guys, like you mentioned before, are a big part of that. But, you know, one thing is, you know, we got a physical backfield. Um, you know, Schick's, you know, 250 pounds. You know, he really brings it for a big guy on both sides of the ball. You know, Nate Kirby, he's a 210-pound um, tailback. So, you know, you know, we'd have some physicality there. And Logan Hess is a good mix-up. He, he kind of has a little bit more shake. But, again, he's a strong kid. You know, all those guys work hard in the offseason. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of, you know, thinking about it, you know, Tom, you know, from, from your perspective, you know, just sort of, you know, the plays that, you know, you guys were able to make throughout the game. And you think about, you know, just – um, you know, kids like, you know, Richard and Crum and then, you know, Hunsaker and, you know, and McDowell running the ball. I mean, you know, coming off of a week where, you know, win against Panther, Bra Panther Valley and Richard was our time soon player of the week, um, you know, and certainly, you know, made some big plays, you know, with those guys on the outside, DJ running the ball, uh, but just kind of, you know, what were some of your takeaways from Saturday's game? Well, you know, it, it's, it was, it was a tough, it was a tough loss. I mean, it's, it's one of those kind of games where, you know, it really could have gone either way, I believe. You know, I think both of us would probably agree uh, that we both left plays out there. You know, um, you know, it, it, you know, Coach Coach Bonner's kids make a couple more plays, and maybe it's a two-score game instead of a one-score game. And, you know, we had a couple plays, maybe, you know, goes the other way. So, you know, I, I think it's one of those, you know, kind of matchups. I think with the exception of maybe the last, you know, two years um, with the great class he had, um, I think we've had some pretty good battles over the years. So, you know, our kids really match up well. Um, you know, Coach Bonner's done such a good job of establishing such a physical presence, you know, with his kids year in and year out. And we knew that going in. And we talked to our kids and said they have to try to match it. You know, I, I, we didn't quite have the same size they have, uh, but we had to try to match it. And at, and at times we did, uh, but it just wasn't consistent enough for us. And, you know, we have some playmakers on the outside that, you know, that we can try to take it take advantage of as far as some matchups go. And, you know, it's, it's like I said, it's, and that's why it's a team game. You know, it's, uh, we had some guys open and missed them. And then there were some times where, you know, our guys didn't run well and, and, you know, didn't tackle well. And again, it goes both ways. And like I said, that's what makes for such a, such a, a tight game and a, you know, a good, a good well-fought game. And, you know, I wasn't really, I mean, I was disappointed about the loss, but I thought our kids effort was there. You know, I, I thought, like I said, there were times where, you know, we had, you know, we went toe to toe with their big guys you know, but I, I kind of joke every once in a while. I said, I think I'm going to find uh, Schick's address and I might send him a helmet sticker because, you know, <laughs> some of the some of the blocks that he had on some of our kids, they just, you know. But, you know, there's, there's no substitute for experience, though. Like Coach said, I mean, when you have the extra weeks that they had last year, um, you know, and the success, I mean, there's there's a carryover for that. Even if they're not necessarily the, the playmakers uh, sure. from last year, they're still the guys that, that were on board, they were on the bus, they were, you know, at practice every single week, and and, and some of them were playmakers for them, but, you know, if there's a carry over there, there's a, you know, a, a, a recognition of how things get done in order to win, you know, championships, and just win games, win tight games, I mean, that's what we talked a little bit about as a staff, and as a as a team as well, is, you know, I, I think it was as much um, about those kids knowing how to win games, um, as opposed to our kids maybe not being quite as used to that. You know, the last couple of years, you know, we've been on the, on the bad side of things, and, and some of those games have been very lopsided. So we haven't been in too many tight games. So, you know, when those crucial moments come up, you know, like I said, I think their kids made just a few more plays than we did. How much of that can you kind of carry over into this week against <laughs> I guess, you know, and just kind of maybe use that as sort of a learning experience and now just kind of use it, you know, as sort of a launching pad into Pottsville that can be kind of a, a bounce back, I guess. Well, I think we have to. I mean, you know, the nice thing about it is, um, you know, with the short and abbreviated, you know, off season and preseason, you know, we were kind of kind of happy to get, I think both of us probably might agree that, you know, to get a, to get a game to start off the season where, you know, you can kind of maybe afford a few more mistakes and then, you know, before you get into a tough game and then, you know, to be tested physically, I, I don't think Pottsville um, is is as physical as Tamaqua, you know, so I think we've been kind of tested up front a little bit there. 
Um, but there are some similarities too. You know, there's a lot of two back stuff. Um, so we kind of like that. So I think we've prepared a little bit for that, you know, but Potsville does, you know, bring some different things to the table too. So, you know, I, I think we're ready to go physically now. Um, you know, for anything, I think that Potsville brings to the table, but you know, every week is a different game plan. So, you know, our kids have to be, you know, ready to kind of press the reset button and, you know, put last week in the rearview mirror, but, but know that we competed with a pretty good team. So, you know, I think right. that's the positive that we got to take away from that. And Sam, for you, I mean, just kind of, you know, you think about, you know, obviously for what your schedule, you know, brings now with playing a team that, um, you know, that maybe, you know, in, in some ways thinking about from a league perspective is kind of an unknown in Riverside, I guess, just kind of, I guess, what are your thoughts going into, you know, going into a game, a game like that, I guess? Well, you know, they're a physical team. Um, it's hard to compare. You know, one thing is that, uh, you know, one of our game films that we have with them, one of our scout team, the scout films is with um, Wyoming area, who's, Unfortunately, the team yeah. that our season last year. So, you know, that was their, their first game of the year. So, you know, we have a little bit of familiarity with the uh, Wyoming area. And we know that they're a physical team. And, you know, and that score is a little lopsided. But you know, what we saw from Riverside is that, you know, they fly to the ball. You know, they like to throw it up. You know, similar to what, you know, we faced this past week with Lee Heighton. You know, they have some athletes on the outside. And, you know, I don't, I don't think they're as big and as physical as Lee Heighton's athletes or – but, you know, they have some skilled kids that can make plays on you. And what we emphasized last week going into it was that we didn't want to go up that big play, which we did give up a big 76-yard pass. You know, against yeah. the, that's the kind of stuff. The kind of ball that we're looking to play, you know, we can't afford to get down, you know, more than a score or two at tops. You know, we got to kind of try and keep things close and, you know, kind of grind it out and, you know, make a couple plays in the passing game, which – you know, fortunately, this week I thought we did not a lot, but we you know we made a couple. But uh, you know that's kind of the thing that we're looking at going on. You know, kind of build off of that. But you know, a team like Riverside, you know, a lot of question marks again because you don't really know um, too much about them. But that being said, you know, you heard throughout the years that Riverside's always a competitive program, so it should be interesting. Like you said, I think they play some physical ball and they're well and they're well coached. You know, with with COVID and everything going on and, and regulations and rules changing by the hour, pretty much. Um, uh, I guess you know, for either one of you, and and just for last week, Tom, was there was there a sense of any less nervousness with like nobody really in the stands for many of your younger kids? I mean, what was it like going on the road? But it was like kind of a different environment. And uh, I guess for you, Sam, I guess when you go and play kind of an unknown um, non-league game all the way up north in Scranton, I guess you don't mind, you know, really not having that uh, extra element to kind of have to deal with. I mean, Tom, did, did the kids have any feedback, you know, playing kind of in front of nobody, or was it just kind of another day at the office kind of thing? I, I, I think it's just another day at the office for them. You know, like I said, I think the kid, as much as, it, you know, you're going to feed off of a crowd, you know, I think the situation is the same for the other team. It's not like it's not like one side has a big crowd behind them and the other one doesn't. So, you know, I think, you know, the fact that, you know, we're both playing in the same circumstances – you know, it doesn't necessarily lend itself one way or another to an advantage. I think the kids just kind of, you know, once the, once the whistle blows and we kick off, and I think they're kind of focused on what they're doing on the field. I mean, like I said, so, you know, I, I don't – I mean, it is different. Don't get me wrong. Like I said, um, I think both sides, you know, could, could, could um, you know, benefit from, you know, a, a home crowd or, you know, just a crowd in general. But, you know, since we're both playing under the same circumstances, I don't, I don't know if it necessarily plays that big of a role. Yeah, and Sam, just, you know, for you, I guess, just kind of what were your thoughts, you know, just kind of being being at home and then having that, I guess, the environment, the way that it was, you know, just kind of with the cheerleaders sort of in one spot, you know, kind of up above the bleachers and then, you know, the band kind of up, um, I guess, up above the parking lot, I guess, just kind of for your guys. It, it, it's funny because, um, like like Tom kind of mentioned, so first week I, I felt like I noticed it more. I think maybe it was because, you know, we got an early lead against Shenandoah. You know, the second half was, you know, a little bit, um, you know, non-dramatic. That, you know, I kind of noticed it a little bit more. You know, this week being in a tight ball game, I, you know, I, I didn't even notice that we didn't have fans behind. You know, it was one of those things that, you know, you get in a tight, close game, you got the headsets on. And, you know, usually even at the end of the game, I, I kind of forget that what's behind me aside from what's in front of me. You know, so that, that's one of those things with myself. But, you know, I, I think the kids – same idea. I think, you know, once, you know, a tighter ball game like we just went through this past Saturday, yeah, you kind of lose sight of your surroundings aside from what's going on on the field. So, you know, I, I want to say I'm hoping we're in a lot of tight ball games where you don't notice as much, 
but at the same time, it's sometimes nice not being in those tight ball games when you have a good lead. But you know, that being said, you know, I, I think the kids, you know, they're out to play ball. You know, it's like business as usual. You know, obviously, you know, it'd be great to have, you know, grandparents, friends, you know, brothers and sisters in the crowd. You know, but unfortunately, right now, that's not the case. Hopefully, it builds off a little bit as the year goes on and you start getting some of those people out to watch the kids. But as of now, I think, like like Tom said, you know, he said, you do what you got to do on, you know, a Friday night, a Saturday afternoon. Um, what was, uh, you know, what were some of the challenges with everything in limbo in August and even before August? I mean, obviously, you know, you guys, I'm assuming, weren't able to get together as usual and under regular circumstances. I mean, was was conditioning a factor? Was it was it a rush to get into game shape? I mean, just from, you know, your experience the last couple months, what were some big challenges? Yeah, I think that was, that. I mean, yeah, it was a challenge. You know, it certainly was when you have the abbreviated, you know, off season. I mean, you know, our, our summers usually loaded up with, you know, seven on sevens and, you know, things like that. We're working on our timing and our passing. And, um, you know, when it, when the preseason did hit, you know, and we couldn't really have two a days, you know, kind of in its traditional sense, you know, we, we definitely felt that we lost opportunities to prepare, you know, both in the installation of what we're trying to accomplish, you know, schematically, but also in the conditioning, you know, the things I, I thought, you know, there were some times, in, you know, both the first two weeks, you know, I, I mean, on top of being a physical game on Saturday, I mean, you saw moments where both sides had kids down on a knee, you know, hands on the knees. And as a coach, you know, you, you don't ever really want to see that, but this is a different situation. I, I don't think, you know, our hands were tied, you know, so I don't, I don't think, Matt, I can't, obviously, I don't know about Coach Bonner, but I just know that, you know, in our attempt to try to balance time between, you know, you know, getting plays in versus conditioning, it wasn't exactly where we wanted it to be on either end. So, you know, like I said, I, I think on Saturday you saw some moments where, like I said, I think it was as much a, a result of, of being physical play, but it was also I think the conditioning came into play too. Yeah, Is Sam, that- I mean, some of your challenges. Sorry, Pat, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, just kind of two weeks, you know, and having two weeks kind of under your belts, I guess, you know, for, for either or both of you guys, I guess, kind of what what has been the thing that's really kind of stood out, I guess, maybe the most for, for you guys, just in terms of getting through these two weeks, of these first two weeks of the season, I guess. I, it's kind of, it kind of, it kind of flew, you know, you didn't have those original, like those tour days. You know, it seems like every year we have less practice before we start it, you know, start a season. And this year obviously was an exception where we maybe had, you know, a quarter of the practices we had in the summertime. Um, you know, one thing you mentioned, seven on sevens, you know, I, you know, not to make excuses, we knew that we were going to have wor- our work cut out for us, losing our quarterbacks, you know, our, our receiver, a lot of our receivers. But, you know, that's something that we were looking forward to maybe work for in the summertime, you know, building on seven on sevens bit more work with those guys which unfortunately we missed a lot of that even once we were able to start up workouts you know we still were kind of you know put on hold as far as going against one another so that that's something that put us behind the eight ball a little bit as far as that was concerned but you know like tom said this is the first time this year that we had to play a full game Uh, we opened up with shenandoah you know he pretty much had our jvs in the whole second half and i'm sure tom had a lot of subs in against panther valley that first week so it was the first, you know, full game that I played. So I wasn't too surprised to see a couple cramp up. And, and I think you saw that throughout the league. And I was watching the, you know, Marion PB game the night before. There were kids going down. And I, I think no matter what you do, even in, you know, a regular offseason, you're still going to have that. But probably even more so with the limited amount of time we had conditioning these guys to go into the season. You know, I, I don't think anybody in their right mind ever predicted – the world would be the way it is the last couple of months. So uh, my last question uh, to both of you, and then I'll, I'll throw it over to Pat to see if he has anything else to wrap up. But uh, Tom, just how happy were the kids be, were the kids just to be back? I mean, to know that they were going to play to some capacity, you know, after seeing a lot of their friends uh, kind of get shortchanged of their senior spring sports and things like that. I mean, what was just the reaction when you guys got together for the first time? Yeah, I mean, it it was it was it was uh, a wave of different type of emotions. You know, the kids were glad. Um, they were ner- I don't want to say nervous, but they were uncertain. Um, you know, I, I I joke. I said when we when we and even still now, but when we first started, I said 
I was as much a janitor as I was a coach because you're you're spraying stuff down, you're cleaning stuff, you're just making sure that some things that you never really thought as a coach you have to worry about, you have to worry about now. And, you know, the message to our kids was, you know, pretty consistent. You know, it's, it's there's certain rules out there. We've got to follow them if we want to play. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter what each individual household feels or believes. I mean, obviously the, the, the spectrum is wide um, as far as how people feel about things uh, going on, especially, you know, as it relates to COVID. So, you know, I said, it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, you can throw that out the window. If football is important to you, we've got to do things a certain way. And so I think our kids kind of bought into that. Um, and I think they still are. And, you know, it's, it hasn't changed. So you know, every single day, I probably say to our kids, you know, <laughs> get some space in between you guys, face it out, you know, whatever, in between drills and things like that to constantly remind them. And, you know, our staff has, has done a really good job. Our training staff, you know, really our training staff has just been phenomenal um, with, you know, putting all the protocols in and things like that. So, you know, our, our trainer, Kristen, has been, you know, she's as, as good as they come when it comes to athletic training. And so her role has certainly been pushed to the forefront here in this kind of situation. So, you know, our staff as a whole administration, you know, I know they're working hard to try to get our kids the best experience they can. And it's, you know, same at our place. You know, I'm sure Sammy gets the same kind of, you know, support from his AD and so on and so forth. So, hey, you know, kids get an opportunity to play. You know, we'll do what we can to make, make sure that continues. Yeah, yeah. Sam, did you have similar reactions from the kids? You know, when you guys got started, obviously, you know, we talked about, you know, you had a, a long, a great season. Were they happy to try to kind of keep the momentum going over there in the Raider Nation? Yeah, definitely. You know, like Mike Romeo does a great job for us every year as AD. You know, this year, I, I'm sure presented a lot more challenges than he expected. You know, like Tom said, our, you know, our athletic trainers, especially um, Maria Donati, she's done a great job for us. And there's, she's another one that I almost feel like, yeah, sometimes I don't, I probably don't seem too approachable when I'm coaching, but you know, she does a great job of filling me in every day of what's going on and you know, what the kids have to do, what has to be done to keep us safe. So she, she's done a great job with that. So, you know, the one thing I can say that, you know, it was great to get back. You know, usually, you know, last year, I think we had 41, 42 kids on the team. You know, there's workouts in the summer, you maybe get 25, 26, sometimes 30. This year, I think we have 40 kids on the team. I think the majority, once we got back, the majority of our workouts, you know, there's probably 40 to 43. We were probably at 90, 95% attendance at each workout. And I, I think that's one of those things where kids started realizing, you know, how much they may miss this if they don't have it. So I, I think they, they got a little bit more appreciation of, you know, that this is something that may not always be there. So it, it was great to see the attendance that we had in the off season. You know, a lot of these young guys that were a part of it early last, a lot of young guys that, might have been in the stands in eighth grade watching us last year, you know, go through the playoffs. They think that, you know, they got a feeling of, you know, we want to be able to do this. And, you know, and once we were able to do it, you know, we were on pins and needles a little bit. You know, each week, you, know, you get 25 texts from other coaches. This is going on and that's going on. And, you know, up to probably like, you know, kickoff of the Shenandoah game, I thought maybe it was a 50 50 chance that we even had a shot at playing. So, you know, it's incredible being able to go into this third week and, you know, and, as we tell the kids before every game, hey, you don't know what's going to happen. Appreciate the moment. Do the most you can for the moment. Do whatever you can to have success and, you know, and look back and say, hey, I did whatever I had to do because it may not be there next week. And we're hoping that, you know, God willing that it's not only there next week, but, you know, from here on out. Patrick, I'll give you the floor before we get out of here. I know you got some previews to do and, and things like that. So any, any uh, kind of last follow-up questions for Tom or Sam before, uh, before we get out of here? Um, I guess, I mean, just anything for either one of you guys, I guess, heading into to week three and just, I mean, I don't know, I guess just how, how happy are you or just kind of, you know, thoughts so far on, you know, just again, kind of getting through two weeks of the season of, you know, where things are and just kind of, I don't know, though. I guess so, too. I guess, Tom, do you, did you notice or do you notice any other maybe kind of sense of urgency or, or anything else along along those lines, I guess, maybe with any of your guys or anybody around the program? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, now with the short season, you know, um, you know, the end is, is a lot closer. You know, I mean, like I said, we played two games, but there's only eight, you know, as opposed to 10. So, you know, we try to impress that upon our kids. I mean, I don't think that the um, – appreciation of just playing has worn off but you know we're now it's it's kind of into a, a more normal mode you know 
we played those two games are under our belt and uh you know now it's 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 more like it's more back to business as usual in a sense you know what i mean as far as the approach you know we we're feeling we're feeling very optimistic as far as you know getting more games in you know and we got to impress upon the kids that you know every every game counts just a little bit more than maybe a regular season because we have less games and and again you never know when it's going to end like coach Bonner said so you know there is a little bit of a sense of urgency but it's 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 um you know like i said our our approach has not been you know different than any other year i mean we still you know we're trying to attack every single game you know with the hopes of winning and and putting our kids in the best position you know and 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 i really really like the group of kids we have this year i think um you know our, our attitude as a team has been great um you know i think we got some really nice pieces um with some good experience so you know, like I said, we came up a little bit short against a really good team last week. So I think we're going to be able to carry that, learn from that, and build from that, um, you know, moving forward. And, you know, so, you know, I, this week is, is, is like, you know, any other week, I think, you know, and from past years. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not saying that the appreciation is worn off, but now that we're into it, you know, we're really trying to, trying to get after it, you know, week in and week out. Yeah, Sam, and anything else for you? I mean, just kind of about being, about, you know, a a quarter of the way through the regular season, I guess, you know, and, and think about it maybe in those terms, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy when thinking about it. You always think about the weeks. You know, last year, this time, we were almost at that halfway point, if you count the two weeks of, you know, camp and heat acclimation. So, yeah, it, it's going to fly. You know, I always feel like once the season starts up and you start getting into that regular mode, you know, AJV game, you know, varsity might live, Tuesday, Wednesday, big practice, Thursday, pregame, Friday game. And once you get on that regular schedule, it seems like the, the weeks fly. And um, like Coach Carroll said, every week counts. You know, you don't know what's going to happen as far as playoffs are concerned, you know, what they, their plans are as far as the postseason. But, you know, we've got to try and do week in, week out, whatever we can to put us, put us in a good situation at the end of the year. I always say you want to get to that end of the year that, you know, you want to be playing for something, whether it be in the move on or, you know, you know for something in addition to your regular season. So, and we want to try and put ourselves in the best situation to make every game matter, especially at the end of the year. Yeah. Anything else for you, Justin? No, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Patrick, what's the Times News content schedule looking like, you know, pretty much during the season for, for anybody looking to pick up a paper and trying to get some football info throughout the week? Yeah. So um, now that we're kind of back into the swing of things, we're um, on track with our Thursday football page, which has <laughs> capsules. Player of the Week, Game of the Week, and Overtime Column by Emmett McCall and Rod Heckman. Um, and then Friday, people can also look forward to our grid pick form by Rick Strack. So, and then Saturday, we have uh, box scores and stories from all of Friday night's game. And then, don't print Monday, but if there's anything on the weekend, be sure to check out uh, tnonline.com for anything that might happen over the weekend, and then pick it up in Monday's paper. Awesome. Awesome. Tom, Sam, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us for a couple minutes. We know you got a, a full plate every week, but best of luck to both of you guys the rest of the way and, uh, you know, have a great week. Thanks again. Thank you guys. Coach McCarroll, good luck. Thanks. Same to you, guys. Thanks. All right. So for Coach McCarroll, Coach Bonner, Patrick Matsinko, and everybody else at the Times News, I'm Justin Carlucci. Have a great week. <laughs>